Hello everyone. Welcome to today's topic, RSSI in LTE. So let's discuss what is RSSI. So RSSI is nothing but received signal strength indicator. It's a measure of measurement of the total power received by device antenna across a given frequency bandwidth okay so it is kind of uh, you know the total power that is received by the device antenna like you were basically in terms of uh, ue uh, i mean in terms of lte or 5g networks it is called ue right user equipment so ue measures this complete signal strength from the network okay so which is termed as RSSI, which is nothing but received signal strength indicator. Okay. <clears throat> so what does it include? Uh, what does RSSI include? It includes everything. Basically, your uh, whatever the actual signal that it uh, supposed to be received, actual uh, received signal and uh, noise from different, uh, uh, whether it's an environment, base noise or thermal noise, right? And then some sort of interference from the external uh, environment. So interference caused by the environment, like you were uh, fading and uh, some uh, reflections from different uh, uh, buildings or uh, you know different environment uh, uh, environment places okay and and also it can include some stray signals from the neighboring cells so which is not supposed to be um, ideally not supposed to be received by the UE but due to the st uh, stronger nature of the neighboring cells you might sometimes receive the uh, signals uh, I mean UE reads these kind of signals and then calculates that into RSSI. Okay. So this is a high level understanding of RSSI. So basically, where does this RSSI gets measured? Okay. So if you if you take the RF chain of uh, your UE, okay. For example, if you take the RF chain of your uh, UE. Okay. So basically, you will be Okay, well, let, let me draw a complete uh, transmission system. So, we'll be having antennas TX side. Let's say this is E node B, or E node B. Okay, so which will be sending data over the channel. Okay, and then UE receives this uh, through some antenna, its antenna, and then pass on to some, some band pass filters. Oh, so basically from antenna, it receives uh, and uh, sends to bandpass antenna, bandpass filter, and then it will get a uh, little bit amplified through LNA, low noise amplifier, then uh, uh, LNA mixers, okay, and then passed on to your analog to digital converter, okay, and this is where your basically RSSI gets measured, okay, received signal strength indicator will be measured at this portion at this point as soon as you convert the analog signal that you have received to digital then rssi will be measured okay so this is where uh, your uh, you know basically where exactly in the ue uh, rf chain or a front end that this uh, particular rssi will be measured okay this complete thing is called rf front end okay so it is since it is measured in the digital domain so it will basically have uh, some kind of uh, you know what the number of uh, you know uh, digital data or the number of uh, where exactly this digital data is placed in whether, whether it's in your sub carriers okay all these things okay so um yeah so uh, basically where uh, this uh, RSSI uh, come into play um, in the downlink channel basically in that downlink is nothing but from E node B to your UE right so uh, 
um, so this is basically uh, an NLT. It measures all the uh, RSSI is measured by the UE across all the channels. Like you have the broadcast channels like PBCH, and then control channels PDCCH, and then PDACH data channel, physical downing shared channel. And then you have some synchronization signals like PSS and SSS and cell specific reference signals like CRS in case of LTE. Okay, so who, whichever RE is a reserve segment that is carrying this uh, uh, information will be, um, uh, will be used to measure the RSSI. So that means that um, it is not specific to any particular uh, signal or anything. It, it, uh, UE basically, whichever the data that is coming in uh, towards this uh, UE side, it calculates, it just captures that uh, signal and then measures the RSSI. So, which means that it will contain all kind of information, like uh, whatever we have discussed, like actual signal, noise, interference, numbering uh, signals, right? Okay. So how, how does this RSSI is measured by the UE basically, okay? So uh, as I told like RSSI is a combination of noise, serving cell power and interference, right? So, uh, and it is typically measured over TBM. So this is the power measurement, not in watts, basically. Sorry, it is not measured in uh, watts, but it is measured in uh, what you call it as, uh, it is measured over the, uh, I mean, it is measured as TBM. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, uh, it is measured in um, this thing. And uh, what is this uh, RSSI contents? Like it is a summation of all the uh, RSSI over the complete bandwidth okay so it is for example you have okay. uh, for example rssa um, is a summation of all the signal received over the entire bandwidth like uh, you have let us say some 10 megahertz bandwidth okay so this uh, rssa will be measured over entire bandwidth of 10 megahertz. So let's say 10 megahertz has, uh, let's say some 50 RBs. So RSSI will be measured over complete 50 RBs. Okay. And then give the value of what is that value in dBm. Not in watts, but in dBm. So um, there is a, um, like, uh, there is a definition also in 3GPP in TS36214 which tells that RSSI is nothing but the linear average of total received power, okay, and what's observed only on OFDM symbols containing reference signals with the measured bandwidth, okay. So this is the official definition given by the 3GPP and the formula to calculate this is RSSI is equal to 12 into uh, this one, 12 into N into RSRP, okay. So RSRP is another uh, uh, measurement of uh, uh, signal strength which purely talks about the uh, signal strength of a reference signal of a particular re okay so this is another important parameter rsrp so if you have to represent rssi in terms of rsrp and vice versa this is the formula okay so what you can tell for rsrp is the received signal uh, um, received power okay reference signal received power is the average received power of one reference signal re okay for example one re is nothing but your one symbol and one subcarrier right so this is re and this re if it carries a reference signal crs let's say okay so that if you measure the uh, power of that particular re that is called as RSRP. So like this, you average it out, uh, depending on the, let's say there are some 100 REs where you are measuring the RSRP. If you average it out, the power that is called your RSRP. Okay. 
and RSSI as you know like it is uh, uh, received power over the entire bandwidth and N is the number of RBs used uh, for the RSSI measurement. For example, if you have uh, 10 megahertz and uh, that means it uses 50 RBs, correct? So those 50 RBs have to be placed over here. So your formula becomes RSSI is equal to 12 into 50 into RSRP value, whatever is been uh, per RE, what is the power, received power, okay? So this is the formula to calculate the RSSI value. Okay, moving on to, so there are uh, different, as you know, like uh, in our LTE network, there are a lot of measurements that uh, gets calculated, uh, like you have RSRP, you have RSRQ, and you have SINR, and RSSI. So what is the relation between them? So these are very important parameters, uh, measurements that uh, you will be uh, calculating uh, which actually defines your all your throughput or the coverage uh, and uh, you know quality of your handovers and voice quality everything right so what is the relation between them so so far we discussed about rsi rssi and rsrp but what is the difference between these individual measurements okay so as i told uh, rssi it measures the total signal power that is including uh, your control channels uh, data and noise and interference okay and the purpose of it is to measure the signal strength sorry to measure the raw signal strength okay and uh, rsrp is on the other hand it is only measuring the reference signal power for example if the uh, if there are no re's uh, that I mean if there are REs that doesn't contain the uh, reference signal then this is not RSRP will not consider the, that particular RE okay so that way it is like only uh, you know, estimating the coverage of a, a cell will be uh, will be using to measure the RSS, RSRP okay so that is for coverage estimation we will use the RSRP whereas RSSI it is to measure the overall signal strength of your um, over the bandwidth what is your signal strength okay let's come to another parameter rsrq it is basically uh, both like signal quality as well as the total power okay so how we how it is measured uh, it contains both rsrp and as well as rssi okay and it defines rsrq basically defines your handover quality or mobility quality okay and the voice quality etc parameters so it basically tells how quality is your signal right how good uh, that particular signal that you have received okay and uh, the last one which is nothing but sinr which is uh, like signal versus noise plus interference so this is is the ratio of signal the uh, actual signal versus the noise and interference so this is also a very important uh, a measurement that UE performs to get the precise quality of your uh, signal you have received okay so this is primarily used in your throughput calculations and decoding and uh, you know scheduling um, kind of activities uh, this particular SINR parameter will be uh, widely used okay so if you compare the uh, RSSI versus RSRP and RSRQ in terms of coverage okay so as you see um, this red line is for uh, RSRQ which is tells about quality of your signal and this um, basically tells the RSRP okay and this one tells you the RSSI okay as you see as long as RSSI uh, is degrading okay when the RSSI is low, your uh, coverage, I mean the distance from cell site also will be more. Okay, that means you are uh, basically far away from the cell. Okay, so when you have cell here and if, you, if your UE is moving in this direction, okay, that means you are moving far away from the cell which actually degrades your RSSI because it receives poor signal as it moves away from the cell right so that is the indication of it similarly rsrp also will get drastically reduced and rsrq uh, 
uh, also gets reduced because it is a ratio of this RSRP and RSSI, right? So eventually RSRP also impacts. But when it comes to throughput versus RSSI and some modulation scheme graphs, if you see, um, as as RSSI gets increased, so the, the x-axis has the RSSI and y-axis has the throughput. So as you see, the it's since it is a neg, as you see, as you increase the RSSI, that means U is coming closer to your uh, uh, what do you call your uh, E node B or the cell. Okay, when U E travels closer to the okay cell, it if it experiences very good uh, RSSI, which also indication that it uh, has very good throughputs. Okay, so if you see minus 100, the throughput was closer to zero, but as soon as the RSSI gets increased to minus 80, you see the throughput was almost like exponentially increased, right? That means your signal is performing better, or you may be experiencing very good signal strength, okay? So that's why you are seeing very good throughputs. Okay. And what are the typical ranges of RSSI? That is minus 44 to minus 65 is excellent. And minus uh, anything less than 105 minus like 105, it is experiencing poor coverage and uh, likely unusable. Okay. You will fail. You will face uh, radio link failures at this uh, uh, range. Okay. And when interference is very high, that means RSSI will be very high. I mean, uh, RSSI also increases because it is a combination of your uh, noise, interference, everything, right? Noise, sorry, noise, interference, and the actual signal, right? And neighbor signal, everything. So that's why when uh, whenever interference is high, um, so basically what it tells is your uh, RSSI, good RSSI always doesn't, uh, guarantee that you have very good uh, throughputs or whatever right performance is good or whatever so because it contains your uh, signal uh, noise and uh, interference all those factors right so that's why uh, you should not blindly assume that uh, a increase in rssi results in good throughput but um, but it may uh, if it if there is a, a kind of noise and interference uh also you will sometimes experience good rssi values okay and uh, so when there is an interference high interference or noise is high then you experience more rssi as well as snr gets dropped and the rsrq also gets worse okay so you should make sure that interference is low and uh, so when it comes to 5g okay so rssi uh, is based slightly the design of RSSI creation is depending upon your SSP block, which is called synchronization signal block, uh, which is uh, typically used in uh, for synch uh, UE synchronization um, during uh, uh, during power on, right? So that time it calculates based on synchronization signal block that contains PBCH plus PSS and SSS. Okay, so that is your. Um, uh, 5G difference, okay, and it also RSSI calculation is also used during beam management uh, of uh, initial access, and uh, the 5G RS also combines multiple beams and frequencies to measure the uh, RSSI values, okay. So this is the high level difference between 4G and 5G. Uh, I hope this uh, uh, lecture has given you a very good understanding about RSSI. So. Thank you for your, uh, um, I mean, taking up this uh, lecture. Thank you.